Good morning and welcome to Community Church. We're glad to be back meeting in person again, but please remember if you can't make it one week or just aren't ready to mingle yet, you can still find us on YouTube every Sunday. Life groups are an important part of Community Church. As we start a new season, we would like to encourage everyone to be linked with one. If you aren't already linked with a life group, then there will be an opportunity next week to sign up to a group near you. Or you can contact us via the contact page on our app or email Deb during the week. Alpha Online is a free course designed to give you the space and time to ask the big and often challenging questions about life, faith and meaning. No filters, just honest discussion. To attend an Alpha Online, all you have to do is sign up and then join a weekly online call, all from the comfort of your home. Everything else is taken care of by your hosts. So feel free to pour yourself a drink, get comfy, get your laptop ready and you are good to go. What have you got to lose? Try Alpha Online. We have a new Alpha course starting on Tuesday the 21st of September. As we'll be running this online, anyone can join us. So please invite people that you know who have questions about life and faith, no matter where they're located. You can sign up to the course via our app, website or email Deb. Do you know how to budget your money and spend it well? No matter what your financial position is, this course will help you to get your money organised. This free three session course will be held online from Thursday the 30th of September. To find out more, email Jane Earl. Have you downloaded our app yet? It's free to download from all app stores and is the best way to keep up to date with everything that's happening at Community Church. You can check out our events, find out when and where our services are, catch up with past teaching series, and you can give your tithes and offerings online. Go to the App Store, search for Community Church UK and get connected. Thank you for continuing to give your tithes and offerings. Even though you aren't with us in person, you can still give online. All details are on the screen now. Thank you for joining us. We hope that you enjoy our online service and we look forward to maybe seeing you in person soon. God bless. Welcome to Community Church Online. It's great to have you with us. Today we're going to be having some sung worship. We have an opportunity to give to the Lord. Uh, we'll have a prayer time and we'll open the word together. I hope you enjoy worshipping with us today. God bless you. on the clouds kings and kingdoms will bow down every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise who can stop the Lord Almighty our God is a lion the lion of Judah he's roaring in power fight in our battles and every knee will bow before him our God is a lamb the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world his blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb every knee will bow before him up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save, 
is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring in power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. Our God is a lamb. sins of the world His blood breaks the chains Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Every knee will bow before Him Who can stop the Lord Almighty Who can stop the Lord Almighty Who can stop the Lord Almighty? God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring in power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. Our God is a lamb, the lamb that was slain. For the sins of the world, his blood breaks the chain. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Church, this is Rodney and I've decided to pray three things today. I've decided to pray for life after COVID, young people and young children and the growth of the church. I've decided to pray for life after COVID because it's a new beginning and there's new opportunities and goals for us to achieve. As well as that, it's a new um, era we're living in now and we have to adjust and adapt. Um, and I pray that life is better than it was what it was before the pandemic. So I'd like to pray for life after COVID. Lord, I pray that as we finally leave COVID behind us, we can take advantage of our renewed freedom. COVID offered a lot of time to reflect on life and spend time with you, Lord. With renewed minds, I pray that we take up new opportunities and set ourselves goals, with you being the vocal point, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I also pray for young people and young children. Uh, it's a new academic year, uh, school is starting, university is starting, and I pray that they're successful and they utilize their knowledge well. Um, I pray that they remember everything they've learned the past year and a half during the pandemic. Uh, additionally, we have to pray for their mental health as well, and I pray that it's a successful year for them and um, mentally they do well. I pray for young people and young children. I pray for a strengthened mental health and a mind ready and open to knowledge. With that, I pray for unlimited success this academic year and beyond. I pray that as they head back to school, they adjust smoothly and comfortably, Lord, and students uplift each other. I pray the Holy Spirit's presence fills the hallways and classrooms as things get challenging, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Uh, the final thing I'd like to pray for is the growth of the church. Like I said, it's a new beginning and uh, the church can dwell into the commun community um, and I pray we're able to do that. I also pray that more people come to know Christ in this community.
As we come out of COVID, Lord, it is a new beginning for the church. It is an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to work in this church and the community surrounding it. I pray more people come to know you, Lord, and the church and attend church as a result. Coming out of the pandemic, a lot of people need emotional and physical help, Lord. And I pray as a church, we are there for our neighbours. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. During this next worship song, we're going to give you an opportunity to give to the Lord, to give to the work of Community Church. There will be a QR code that will come up on the screen and a web address. Please give as the Lord directs you. God bless you. stories of what they think you're like but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and I'm never
searching for answers only you prove because you just what we need before we say oh you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I speak peace so unexplainable I, I can hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love love Today we're going to be opening the Word together, but it's going to be a little bit different uh, to what we normally do at Community Church. We're going to be across all of our sites looking at the Word to see what it means to have a healthy church. We're going to answer five questions. Who is the church? When do we meet? Where do we meet? Why do we meet? And what does a church do? Those five questions we're going to answer, and we call this the, the left-handed guide to church. And it's going to be very interactive. I'm going to give you um, some Bible readings, and uh, I want you to go and, and pause at the video so that you can do the exercise like everyone else will be doing in person uh, during this week. You will need a piece of paper, and you'll need a pen, and you're going to need a Bible. If you're listening in family groups or in couples, um, please do it together. If you're on your own, then please do the exercise on your own. It's great to learn this way together. So the first thing I want you to do is to draw around your left hand. Uh, we're calling this the left hand, left-handed guide. To healthy church.
So take your left hand, and uh, I'm going to make mine a bit bigger so you can see it, um, but just put it on there, and then draw around this, like that. And you've got one, two, three, four, five fingers there, and we're going to ask these questions on these five questions. Who is the church? That's the first question we're going to ask. Who is the church? The next one is when. When do we meet? The third question is where. Where does the church meet? The fourth question we're going to ask is why. Why do we meet as a church? And then the final question is, what does the church do? And we're going to look at those five questions, and we're not going to try and take our traditional historic position. We're going to look at what the Bible teaches. What does the Bible say about the early church? So I want us to lay aside any preconceptions, lay aside anything that we do at the moment, just say, if we, all we had was the New Testament, what would our answer be to these questions? Who is the church? When does the church meet? Where does the church meet? Why does the church meet? And what do we do when we meet? Now, what I'm going to do is to write on here lots of Bible readings uh, for you to look at. So, for example, um, here was who is the church. I want you to look at Acts 2 and verse 41. Okay, that's going to give you the answer to that question. Then, when do we meet? We're going to look at Acts 2. And we're going to look at verse 46. And we're also going to look at Hebrews 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 to 25. Okay. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 to 25. And then where do we meet? There's quite a few uh, readings for this one. And so where do we meet? In Acts. There's lots of references in Acts. So these are all Acts references. So 2.46, oh, two, chapter 46, 5.42, are we going to look at that one? We're going to look at 16, verse 13. We're going to look at 16, verse 40. We're going to look at 17, uh, verses 5 to 7. We're going to look at 18, uh, verse 7. 19, verse 9. And 20, verse 20. So those are all Acts reading that I'd like you to look at and see what answer you come up with. We can also add into that Romans. And uh, chapter 16 gives us some interesting uh, answers to this question. And we look at verses 1 to 5. So we could look at Romans and we can look at 1 Corinthians and ver chapter 16, verse 19, and then also Colossians, chapter 4, verse 15. So there's a lot of readings there uh, in the New Testament that help us understand where the church meets. And I want us to look at that and get a picture from the New Testament about where the church meets, not our preconceived ideas. So the next one is why do we meet? A couple of readings here. Um, 1 Corinthians and it's chapter 10 verse 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 31 and then Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 to 
to 25. We already have that one over here, but we can use it again there. And then finally, when we come to what does a church do, we're going to look at Acts 2. And we're going to go verse 38 to 47. So what I'd like you to do is to take time now to go through all of those Bible readings and to mark them down, mark them on your piece of paper, and then work through those readings to answer these questions so that you yourself discover the answer to these questions rather than someone telling you what the answer is you will do it yourself and you will come up with what the New Testament church did and how uh, the church was formed into a healthy New Testament church. So if you're watching this on video, I invite you to pause the video at this point and take as much time as you need uh, to answer these questions. And then when you're ready, come back and we'll go through uh, the answers together. Have fun. I hope you enjoyed working through those Bible readings and had great fun looking at the answers. We'll just go over this now together just to see uh, what we've learnt and what the Bible teaches uh, to answer our questions. The first question that we asked was, who is the church? And we looked at Acts chapter 2, verse 41. And it says, those who accepted the message those who had repented and accepted the message and were baptised were added to their number. And so if they were added to their number, there's a recognised group of people that are the church and they knew who was in and who was not because otherwise how could they add to the number? And so the church is those that have repented Those that are baptised and added to the fellowship in some way. Uh, some churches would have recognised membership. Some people will be a little bit looser than that. But there's a, an understanding of who's committed to the church and who hasn't. They were added to their number. They knew who was in and who was out. There was a clear definition of those that were in the church. And so those that were repentant, those that were accepted the message, those that were baptised, were added to something. They joined something, and there was a clear definition of those that are committed. Now, that passage goes on to say they were devoted to certain things. There was a commitment. This wasn't something that they did uh, in their spare time. Uh, this became their life. This is what they gave themselves to. They gave themselves to the church. So who is the church? Those that believed the message were repent, repented and baptised and added to their number. The next question was, um, uh, when do we meet? Now here, uh, I hope, I wonder what you found here. The answer is not written in stone in the New Testament. Uh, in fact, if you were to read uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 46, you see they met daily. Uh, this daily rhythm of meeting together, sharing meals together, having communion together, opening the word together. Uh, they met daily. And then Hebrews chapter 10, the other reading, uh, talks about um, spurring one another on and says, let us not give up meeting together. And so I think that the, where we would come to this is when do we meet? Uh, we would say regularly. Okay. Um, it's for some, it's weekly or bi-weekly or twice a week, whatever that may be. Um, we, we want to be regular in our approach. We want to be consistent. We want to give a priority to gathering together. There's no such thing in the New Testament of a Christian that doesn't meet together with other Christians. There's no such thing as that we find in the New Testament, but they met regularly. We need to establish a regular pattern of meeting that we commit to. That we, again, we don't just fit it in if we are, uh, you know, oh, I'm too busy this week, I can't come. No, this is our joining. This is what it means to belong, that we're going to meet and we're going to meet regularly. So if you are planting a church, you need to establish what that rhythm looks like. Uh, for us at Community Church, we gather on Sundays 
and we gathered during the week. Twice a week is our main uh, rhythm of gathering. So we want to encourage you, gather on a Sunday and gather in midweek in life group. Those are the two gathering points for us. We're not going to follow the early church and meet daily, um, but at least we've got a pattern of twice a week gathering together. And then we looked at the, all of these readings here about where does the church meet. And if you went through that, you would see Acts 2, verse 46. They met in temple courts and in homes. Acts 5, verse 42, in temple courts and in homes. In Acts 16, uh, this one here, they met beside a river. You know, they went to a prayer point by the river. River. Acts 16, verse 40, Lydia's house. Acts 17, Jason's house. Acts 18, uh, another house. Uh, Acts 19, verse 9, this one here, you see they met in a lecture hall. They've been chucked out of the synagogue, and so they went to meet in a lecture hall. Um, and it goes on and on. And we see the nature of this is uh, they met anywhere they could. <laughs> there was no specific building that they designated as a church. They met in houses, they borrowed uh, schools, they met outside on the riverbanks. They met wherever they could, whatever was the right place for them. So churches can meet anywhere that's appropriate. We can meet uh, in schools, we can meet in buildings, we can hire centres, uh, and it is helpful sometimes to have a church building. But we must realise that the church building is not the church and the church is wherever we gather. And there is, a, however, a clear precedent. I don't know if you notice how many times these readings said they met in homes. They gathered in people's houses. There's a clear precedent in the New Testament to meet in homes. And I want to encourage us to open our homes. Of course, their homes would have been bigger and there would have been a lot more people in the we would. But I want to encourage us to open our homes to share fellowship together and to know that, that that's what God has opened uh, for us to do. There's something about hospitality. There's something about being open in your home environment. And so I want to encourage us to be more and more hospitable, more and more gathering in homes. It's flexible. It means we can multiply quickly. And it's a clear New Testament principle. So what I'm going to say here for where do we meet? I would say anywhere is the answer here. I'll write it up here. Anywhere. We can meet anywhere, but it must include homes as some, because that is a clear principle in the New Testament. We need to meet in homes. And so that's where do we meet? Uh, anywhere that's appropriate. The early church didn't have their own buildings. They, they, didn't do it. they hired buildings, they used this, they used that. There was no such thing as a church building until the church was established uh, uh, a few hundred years later. So the next question we asked was, why do we meet? What is the purpose of our meetings? And we read from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and hopefully from that you would see, it, we would have found, for the glory of God. Okay, we meet for the glory of God. It's all for him. It's all about God. It's all to God. It's through God. It, it's all about Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's for his glory and his glory alone. And, and we must make sure that our gatherings are upward focused. It's not about the preacher. It's not about the worship. It's not about where we meet. It's all about God for his glory glory. But in Hebrews chapter 10, we also see a purpose of meeting together is to encourage one another. Okay, so we, we meet to glorify God, to get around the words, to worship, you know, to testify to what God has done, but we also spur one another on, encourage one another, uh, minister to one another. There's this beautiful church that has been gathered and the Holy Spirit pours out gifts so that we can encourage one another, minister to one another for the glory of God. So why do we meet? It's for the glory of God and uh, for encouragement for each other. 
And then our final question, uh, which is a big question. <laughs> what do we do? Well, I'm going to leave that a little bit open for us to look at in, in life groups during the week. Um, but if you was to read that passage in Acts chapter 2, uh, verse 38 to 47, I hope you would have found maybe 12 different things that the church did. So uh, we would put this into a separate module usually called the church circle. And so I'm going to use symbols here rather than write it all out because I'm going to run out of room here. So first of all, we see repentance. So there we are, a turning around. We see repentance. We see baptism. Okay, people are baptised. Uh, when they repent, they are baptised. We see Holy Spirit ministry. And I'm going to do my best... Uh, Picture of a flame. That should be a flame there. I hope that uh, comes out on the video. Um, there was prayer. Okay, people prayed. Okay, there's prayer. We we, we must have prayer. We saw witnessing. Um, God added to them daily those that were being saved. So they were witnessing. They were sharing the gospel. We also see generous giving. Okay, they gave generously to one another. There was a, a, a generous spirit amongst them. We see that. We see the teaching of God's word. And they, they gave themselves the apostles' teaching, the word of God. And uh, we want to be a church that is based upon the word of God. Uh, we, we want to know that it's only scripture. There's nothing else. We want to uh, preach scripture, teach scripture, get into scripture and be obedient to scripture. There was, of course, communion. They gave themselves to communion. They shared communion in their homes and when they were together. Um, so we, we share communion. I want to encourage us in small groups, uh, nearly every time we meet, share communion. You know, it's, it's a, a wonderful sacrament that the Lord has given to us that we share together. So as often as we meet, uh, let us share communion together. There was praise. There was this wonderful sense of praise where they gave themselves to singing and, and praising the Lord in worship. Uh, we can see that they praised the Lord. There was a commitment to gather. And when we do the church circle, uh, we start off with a, a dotted line like that, and then we make it to a solid line when we see they were actually devoted to this. They committed to each other. This wasn't something they fitted in as a hobby. This was their life. And there was a loving fellowship. There was fellowship and there was great love there, shared there. And one final thing that we could add into this, um, which is helpful, you see that uh, during the whole passage that Peter took a lead. He was the one that led, he was the one that preached. And of course, as we go through the New Testament, we see that leadership of the church in the New Testament is eldership. And so we could actually add into this, and I'm going to put it here because I've run out of room, that we, the church needs elders. Okay, And that is what the church does. So this is a healthy church. Uh, if we've got all those 12 things in church, that's a healthy church. And we can find all of that from Acts chapter 2, verse 38. So here we've answered our five questions. And I hope that you found the same things when you uh, looked at the Word of God. Who is the church? Now, sometimes when you look at the church and say there's 200 people there, that may not be the church. That might just be the people that are in the room. The, the church is maybe not visible to us. It's those who have repented, have accepted the message and repented. Those that have been baptised and those that are added to their number. When does the church meet? We see daily and it says do not stop meeting together. So we say regularly meet, get a rhythm of meeting that you commit to and you will put that in your diary as a priority. Everything else fits around that. Everything else fits around the gathering of God's people. And then we looked at all of these readings to see where does the church meet. 
and we found they met in homes. That was a clear New Testament principle. But they met anywhere, anywhere they could find, um, uh, whatever hall they could rent and, and use, or even in the outdoors, they met anywhere that was suitable. Why does the church meet? It's for the glory of God and to encourage one another as we follow the ways of Jesus. And what does the church do? Well, there's 12 things here. We see repentance, baptism, Holy Spirit activity, prayer, witnessing, generous giving, the word of God being taught faithfully. We see communion being shared. We see praise and worship. We see a commitment to each other. And we see a loving fellowship, which is led by elders. I hope that answers some questions for us about what a healthy church looks like. And as we go and try to live a life and gather as a church in this way, there may be things that we have to adjust, things that need to change. But I pray that we will always come back to Scripture. What does the Bible teach us on these things? And I pray that God will help us to be a healthy church that plants healthy churches into other towns and other cities and even into other nations for the glory of God and for the advancement of his kingdom. Can I pray for all of us? Lord, I thank you for your church. Your church is a glorious, radiant, holy church that you have established through Jesus Christ our Lord. And Lord, we, we love you and we love your church. We love being together. We love gathering together. And Lord, we want to be the, a church like we read in the New Testament, a fruitful church, a witnessing church, a praising church, a church of, where signs and wonders through the Holy Spirit are everyday activities, a church where there's love and fellowship, uh, Lord, and commitment to you and to each other. Lord, help us be a church that is based upon your word, full of your spirit, and Lord, a church that is growing, making disciples and planting other healthy churches. Thank you, Lord, that you have done that. And Holy Spirit, come and help us to live according to your word, for your glory and for your name's sake. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed uh, doing something different today um, and it's great to see the comments uh, on, the, on the chat if you'd like to put some comments in or contact us and find out how you could be part of a healthy New Testament church. God bless you.
I hope you've enjoyed worshipping with us today. I pray that God will bless you, will give you peace and grace as you go into these coming days. And we look forward to worshipping with you again. God bless you.